This 13 year old SUV just got a brand new engine. The systems are all set up. The battery is all charged. We got all the fluids in it. And so it's all ready to get started, right? Get put the key in, start her up. But with a brand new dry engine, you need to prime it first. And when you prime a new engine, especially a GM engine, you need to use, the, or at least the pros use, specialized equipment. They say that when you prime an engine, when you first build an engine and you get ready to prime it, it can sit for about two months before the uh, lubricant that they put in it will dry out. <laughs> I don't have specialized equipment. And this engine has been sitting for over two and a half years. I'm Big Red, and I'm gonna show you how to do a tough job like swapping an engine in a tiny two-car garage. This is my 2008 Saturn Outlook. It's the same car as the Chevy Traverse, the Buick Enclave, and the Acadie. This car needed a new engine because the timing chain failed. It's a pretty common problem in these cars. The timing chain failed because, well, you don't want to use cheap filters and oil. You certainly don't want to use cheap filters like this Fram. You want to use good filters, like this Can-In, which says here, um, let's see if we can read that. We got a performance gold uh, oil filter, uh, premium efficiency, super efficiency of like um, capacity, which means, probably in English, expensive. GM has a standard which they call Dexos. You wanna use that standard. That standard tells, tells you don't use cheap oil, don't use cheap, <laughs> don't use cheap oil filters <clears throat> because otherwise your engine will overheat and die. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that next time we're together. I fixed this car because I don't wanna to have to give up on yet another car. Have you ever had to do that? <laughs> if you have, you know what it's like. Give me a, tell me about it in the, in the comments. So I just finished swapping this new, this new engine in here. When you get a new engine, it's called a dry engine in the industry, I guess. Uh, a dry engine means it doesn't have any oil in it. It's never had any oil go through it. So you need to prime it. Normally, when they build an engine, They'll put some special lubricant on it so that it won't be completely dry when you start it up for the first time. But like I said, this engine has been sitting for over two and a half years, so that lubricant is probably all gone, meaning we really need to prime this. So why do you need to prime an engine? To stay cool, an engine needs two things, oil and water. It needs water, to keep the engine cool, obviously, and dissipate the heat. It needs oil to keep all the parts lubricated. There are lots of tiny little parts in, this, in these uh, engines and every single one of them needs to be lubricated. So, uh, and, and if you don't lubricate all of those parts, the engine will overheat and it will fail. So, before I start this engine, I'm gonna make sure it's primed. Now, what is priming an engine? Priming an engine is when you force all of the air out of the chambers in the engine. So like I told you before, these engines start off dry. They need, you need to put oil into them and then start the oil. Once you put the oil in, you get the oil down in the oil pan. It needs to be pulled up into the engine, forced through all the ports, and it lubricates all the different parts of the, the tiny parts of the engine, right? So uh, there's lots of air in, in, the, in those chambers. You need to force it all out. Priming the engine is forcing all of that air out and replacing it with oil. So how do you prime an engine? Well, the pros, as I said before, use specialized equipment to force the air out of the engine and let oil flow through all the chambers. If you, like me, don't want to spend the $200 or more on this specialized equipment, here's what you can do. You want to fill the engine with conventional oil. 
Now the manufacturer recommends that in a dry engine you want to start with conventional oil rather than synthetic oil like I like to uh, put in all my engines. So <clears throat> you'll put the, the conventional oil into the engine and then run it for about 500 miles. That primes it, I guess a different kind of way, yeah, priming. So then, so then once we've got the conventional oil in the engine, then I will get in, turn the key, and let the starter turn the engine over and start the oil pump, pulling the oil up out of the oil pan and starting the flow through all the chambers in the, in the engine. While I'm holding the starter and turning over the engine, I'm gonna be looking at the oil indicator, oil pressure indicator light. <laughs> The oil pressure indicator light will be on at first, it should be, if everything is working. If it's, if it's on when I first turn the engine on and start the engine turning over and then it goes out, that means we've got oil pressure and the oil pump is now doing its job. We can slap, slap everything back together and start this engine up and drive away in the video. If that doesn't work, well, <clears throat> that means we don't have oil pressure. We haven't forced all the air out of the, out of the engine. So somehow we need to get the chambers in the engine filled with oil so that the oil pump can start doing its job. So at that point, we'll take the, uh, we'll take the valve covers off, pour oil over the valves and down into the engine through some of the ports that are through into some of the chambers directly, filling the chambers in the engine with oil, and then try again watching that oil pressure indicator light. Now, what if the oil pressure indicator light isn't sufficient? What if it doesn't work? What if it, uh, it, it just stays on? One thing I can do is take the, um, this thing, the oil filter off <laughs> and put and watch to see if oil starts to spurt out of where the uh, oil filter was. If oil is spurting out of where the oil filter uh, connects to the engine, that means we have oil pressure. So to get started, we're gonna take the air intake system off, we're gonna take the intake manifold off, and then we're gonna remove the spark plugs so that when I turn the key, there won't be any compression. The engine will turn over nice and quickly, causing the oil pump to turn over nice and quickly and give it the best possible chance of getting that oil up out of the oil pan and through the chambers, priming that engine. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now that that's done, I hope you enjoyed the music. I do, makes me work really, really fast. So we removed the intake manifold and the, and the spark plugs. Next time, we're gonna go ahead and put the key in and turn the engine over and get this engine primed. Hopefully, get it all started up. Now for some housekeeping. The way, if you like this video, 
the way YouTube <laughs> knows that you like the video is if you engage with it. So comment, like, subscribe, whatever you do with the video to engage with it, that'll let, that'll let uh, YouTube know that you like this video and that you wanna see more. Follow us on TikTok at bigred.media. And just so you know, I swapped out this engine, the old engine, for a brand new engine. And guess what? I recorded the whole thing with beautiful video from a first person view. I mounted this camera on my head. You could see everything, third person view, anything that you might miss looks good from that angle as well. Sound is beautiful. It's great. Everything is great. If you want to support us, if you like what you've seen here, go to my website at bigred.media and buy that video. It'll let us know that you like what you see and will help support the work that I'm doing in my tiny two-car garage. We'll see you next time.